Hi, my name is Dr. Judy Kimaru and I'm a director with Action for Protection of Animals Africa. Today I'll be discussing the welfare of animals in disasters in the context of Africa. Welcome to the presentation. In Africa, the relationship between natural disasters, animal welfare and communities resembles a complex web of interdependence. Natural hazards like droughts, floods and animal disease outbreaks can devastate both animal populations and communities, affecting livelihoods and economies. This connection highlights the vital role of animals in African life. Vulnerability in the animal sector is influenced by factors like population growth, urbanization and climate change, adding pressure to this delicate balance. To address these challenges effectively, it's crucial to strengthen information access, community capability, infrastructure, and address specific African contexts like land degradation. Recognizing these interconnected factors can help build a more resilient animal sector that supports communities and preserves the African way of life. The Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction is reflected in the African Regional Strategy for DRR, aligning global priorities for understanding risk, strengthening governance, investing in DRR, and enhancing disaster preparedness with tailored actions to address the specific challenges of DRR in Africa. Animal emergencies are categorized into two distinct types, animal disease emergencies, where animals themselves are the emergency because they've been infected by either a virus, a bacteria, or a fungi. And the second is animal disaster emergencies, where animals are within the emergency context, just like people. The primary goal of protecting animals in disasters is to prevent death, productivity losses, genetic diversity loss, uh, diseases from establishing, suffering of the animals, stress to the animals, and ultimately to protect the livelihoods of animal owners. Acknowledging an even progress in disaster resilience across Africa, we recognize that some regions face unique challenges like insecurity, which hinders disaster risk reduction and management efforts. To address this, we advocate for a shift from superficial box ticking to comprehensive disaster commitment, stressing the importance of political and institutional engagement. Additionally, it's crucial to augment domestic resources for effective DRR, including utilizing national budgets alongside donor-driven actions. Emphasizing shared responsibility with the primary accountability resting with African states is key, along with engaging stakeholders at all levels. Strengthening regional economic communities and promoting harmonization between national and international and community levels is essential. Lastly, we stress the necessity for Africa's Africanization of DRR thinking and processes promoting ownership and coherence in both bottom-up and top-down disaster management actions. The African Union has provided strong leadership in driving DRR initiatives across regional economic communities, having made commendable progress in developing early warning systems. In 2022, Africa experienced a series of severe weather events, including tropical storms, deadly floods in Nigeria, and drought and famine and heat waves in Uganda and Ethiopia, resulting in around 410 fatalities and affecting millions. These events highlight the growing uh, climate crisis, aggravated by factors like conflict, insecurity, and underdevelopment. Additionally, Gabon, which recently underwent a coup, faces the added complexity of being prone to floods and landslides, illustrating the multifaceted challenges the region faces. It's interesting to note how we are addressing climate change consequences. So in 2022 alone, there were over 4,000 deaths as a result of meteorological hazards, and over 19 million people were affected across Africa. And it is estimated by 2030, over 118 million people in Africa will be affected by climate-related droughts, floods, and extreme heat. So one of the challenges that we are experiencing is that Africa's extreme climate change events for the past three years or so 
has gone underreported in the global northern media, despite their significant impacts. And why is this important? It is important because uh, our disaster response and our disaster uh, risk reduction is actually mainly funded by donors. Only 4% of our national budgets go towards disaster risk reduction. So if our events are not being reported in the global north, it means that the flow of funding will also reduce. And this means that uh, African nations have less money coming in to deal with their extreme weather events. In our examination of disaster risk reduction initiatives, we look at UNDRR, which is spearheading urban resilience through its program or campaign, Making Cities Resilient, focusing on infrastructure, building codes, and disaster preparedness. Notably, they are now engaging animal welfare partners like us, APA, to include animal protection. Having recognized the significance of protecting various animal species, in urban and peri-urban areas across Africa. Many programs are committed to integrating gender responsiveness and they need to be looking at an overlooked issue of speciesism. It is crucial to recognize how different genders are responsible for different animal species and that's what we call speciesism. So the relationship between gender and speciesism needs to be better understood so that it can be incorporated into the various DRR initiatives. Another example of a program is FAO, who provide technical assistance in developing DRR strategies in the animal resource sector. Their efforts include conducting assessments and facilitating capacity building initiatives. Their ICTAD program contributes to these efforts in Africa. Notably, we also have the World Organization on Animal Health also helping, uh, having some initiatives that are very key in Africa. Other African institutions that are actively engaged in addressing the critical challenges associated with disaster risk reduction within the context of animal welfare and animal resources include EGAD, which has integrated conflict prevention with DRR to safeguard and mitigate against conflict. And this is very important, especially among our pastoral communities where conflict is a big issue. And we know, as mentioned, that conflict does uh, interfere and hinder proper DRR implementation. Another example is AUIBUS Pest Management Initiative, which is very critical in the fodder management. And fodder is a critical component of livestock feeding at all stages of disasters. The African Union has also spearheaded the integration of indigenous knowledge into national and regional strategies, and also at community level. Another interesting project is the African Risk Capacity Project, which is an insurance uh, plan for na nations, for African states, and they can insure against disasters and including in the animal sector. And so all these initiatives are providing disaster risk reduction uh, efforts, which is notable. African institutions grapple with multiple challenges in implementing effective disaster risk reduction initiatives for the animal sector. These include fragmented coordination, inadequate early warning systems, limited financial resources, capacity gaps, deficient community engagement, and regulated practices like dog breeding and dog hunting, as well as pet abandonment. And there's also the expansion of peri-urban farming. These challenges emphasize the critical importance of addressing these issues to establish comprehensive and resilient disaster risk reduction strategies that can safeguard animals in Africa during disasters and other crises. The effective integration of disaster risk reduction principles into animal welfare faces several policy challenges, including the persistence of outdated colonial laws, suboptimal execution of DRR and animal welfare integration, fragmented animal DRR legislation, a lack of ownership and coordination within the DRR landscape, and the unclear role of the chief veterinary officers. Additionally, global alignment with the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction and addressing capacity, financial constraints, and communication gaps offer opportunities for improvement in policy implementation 
to enhance disaster preparedness and animal protection. Exploring further policy challenges in DRR and its connection with animal welfare, we find obstacles like the absence of dedicated animal emergency plans, the need for political commitments and legislative frameworks to elevate disaster risk management, and other challenges like the importance of mainstreaming DRM principles across sectors. Additionally, balancing resource mobilization, adapting a comprehensive approach rather than a response-centric one, addressing root causes of disasters, and enhancing resilience without creating dependencies are crucial aspects. These challenges highlight the need for a coordinated, comprehensive, and forward-thinking approach in DRR to create a resilient and inclusive disaster management framework benefiting both human and animal populations. Based on a 2021 animal welfare assessment in Kenya conducted by Action for Protection of Animals Africa, it was found that farmers' decisions regarding disaster risk reduction for their animals are primarily influenced by their cultural and social values, with poverty rather than knowledge gaps often hindering effective DRR efforts. The well-being of animals before a disaster significantly impacts their resilience, highlighting the importance of consistent good husbandry practices. Farmers expressed a strong desire for the integration of DRR into livestock training provided by extension officers. Additionally, a key takeaway is the necessity of blending both scientific and cultural factors when planning the stocking and restocking strategies. Farmers also stress the importance of including animal DRR in veterinary education and advocated for holistic government approaches that combine early warnings with traditional knowledge to safeguard both animals and the communities during disaster. Farmers advice for improved support from institutions and their governments includes the need for tailored animal disaster plans, integrating animal welfare into existing institutions, investing in veterinary training, empowering local communities, providing resources at the local level, equipping farmers with the preparedness tools, incorporating indigenous knowledge, introducing disaster preparedness education in schools, offering insurance options, and allocating financial resources for resilient infrastructure and post-disaster recovery. These recommendations aim to strengthen disaster risk reduction strategies and enhance the resilience of the farming communities while prioritizing animal welfare. In Africa, progress has been made in disaster risk reduction policies, but there is a pressing need to prioritize animal protection during disasters, considering their significance in African livelihoods and ecosystems. This involves developing tailored animal emergency disaster plans, providing DRR education for veterinary professionals, ongoing extension training for farmers, and integrating indigenous knowledge. Engaging local communities, exploring financial options, and expanding the workforce dedicated to animal disaster response are also crucial steps forward in enhancing animal resilience during crisis on the continent.